Hello everyone, welcome to this video about the physics internal assessment. In this video, you'll learn how to improve an internal assessment that has been graded as a grade 5 and turn it into a grade 7 with a few simple steps and a few simple tips. Uh, we will go through all the criteria starting from personal engagement, exploration, data analysis, evaluation, and communication. So, this internal assessment was made on the explanation nature of a bouncing ping pong ball, so it's a relatively easy subject, uh, an investigation on bouncing and exponential decay. Uh, so it shouldn't be too hard for a student to make an experiment about this. So getting started, we will start with personal engagement and here are the, start with the reasons of why this got the grade that it got, how to improve it to get the perfect score, and of course samples of the text so you can read what was actually written and how it was improved. So first of all, this internal assessment got a 1 out of 2 for personal engagement. And there's a lot of reasons for that. The first reason would be that it's, the engagement was a bit insincere. And what that means is that there was a lot of the use. I was interested, I was curious, I loved. But there was not exactly any proof of that. Um, as a student, you have to prove that you're engaged, that you're interested in the subject. So you can see that the first line was I was they, how they studied mathematics and it was very interesting and that doesn't give us a lot of information. How it should have been done is most of the times they put some data. For instance, a, a small quote concerning some interesting fact that shows the nature of what you're studying. Uh, here they chose a story about the chessboard and the king. So this is an important thing to so, show that you researched it enough uh, to know something interesting that you know uh, the subject well enough to know these kind of facts. Uh, second thing we can go on about is the explanation on the exponential growth was not as good as it should have been. Uh, of course we should fix this, right? Uh, originally, you can see here, there was a short explanation of what exponential growth is and a short example about uh, leaking uh, tank, water tank. Okay, so you say, okay, an example is enough, but we can do this better. And the way we make this better is, uh, you can see that this definition for exponential growth is a lot more rigorous, more like a dictionary or more, it shows that you actually did the research, you understand the subject. Uh, we put some numbers into the example to show that you know how it works, you can, you're able to do the numbers and calculations. Next. Um, it, there's a context of the, concept, the concepts of exponential growth and decay that were not exactly well handled in this case. Uh, and what happens is there was examples of the significance and how exponential growth and decay are important in several other subjects, but you have to talk about physics in particular. Uh, this is not a very big deal. Uh, what you can do is just add some physics concepts that also use this. Uh, the significance of this exper experiment could be also enhanced by real life applications, how knowing this can help you in real life, etc, etc, etc. Of course, not everything is bad. There's some positive sides. The writer uh, did show that they have knowledge on the topic, but the research question is a bit unfocused and lacks clarity. Uh, and it does not really convey what is being investigated or studied. And that has to be re really clear to who is reading this paper. So uh, we did this by adding a new section and there's a very clear explanation of what is being looked at, what has to be the confirmed, what is the scope of this ex inter external assessment. So next. Next part is the exploration side. And if the personal engagement side is more the introduction, the exploration side is the background, the theory, how you designed the experiment, uh, how you designed the experiment's uh, variables and define them. So first off, uh, of course, you have to give the context of what you're doing. This person explained uh, what the context is of the bouncing balls. There's a explanation here that says how bouncing balls lose energy when they bounce, but it is not very detailed. They give, they just say, okay, 
there's some heat and sound produced. Uh, you could do better if you really did the research. You would know the exact mechanisms that occur and how this heat and sound really come out. So, and we change this. Uh, you give some explanations of how the heat is produced, how the sound is produced during these collisions. Uh, and this makes it a lot more detailed and shows that you did a lot more research. Next, uh, there is also some things that you should do in your uh, internal assessment is if you, if you give information about a variable or a concept, it would be good to define it well enough so someone else can understand it. Uh, in this case, they mentioned the coefficient of restitution and there was an explanation of how the bounce height relates to the coefficient of restitution, uh, but it was not very detailed. It's very vague. You can see that uh, the coefficient of restitution is mentioned once and then forgotten about. So what happens is you can do better than this. If you have a concept that you're explaining, the best thing to do would be define it mathematically. We give the formula, you also give the explanation. Uh, in this case, ju they don't just say that there's a coefficient of restitution, that you have to show the relationship between this coefficient and the bouncing heights, which is what we need, instead of being very big on, and just ending it with there's a relationship, which is not very good. Next. Here we can see also that the scientific data has to be included so that you can compare, uh, reference it inside your background and uh, introduction. And in this case, what they provided us is the bouncing percentage from, the, from a, a golf ball. So it, it gave you the site, it gave you some detailed scientific data. Uh, but if you see, it's not really re directly related to a ping pong ball. You could do better than this. And also the site reference is not a very good site. You can see if you click on it, it's kind of childish, not a reliable source. So we will change this into this. So first is source. The International Table Tennis Federation uh, would be a more than reliable source for data on ping pong balls. You can see that it gives you the coefficient of restitution, it gives you the bounce height percentage, and then interprets this as the upper limit for the bounciness of the ball. So it's, it gives you the data, it gives you how it should be used inside the experiment, and also gives you the citation. Next up, uh, one thing that you should do in exploration is you have to reveal how you design the experiment, you have to reveal the considerations and such. Uh, one thing that they missed in this internal assessment was that uh, they, well, they defined several of the things that the ball selection, the drop height, and the controlled variables, not very well, mind you, uh, but they forgot to say how they, what the surface was that we're dropping it in. And that's very important. If you drop a ping pong ball, not only is a ping pong ball important, the surface you drop it on is also important because uh, later on the experiment has to be reproducible. They have to be able to do it again. And if you don't know what it was dropped on, you, don't, you cannot do this experiment again. So to change this, we changed it to, uh, there's a small portion that tells you what the surface was and defines it. And actually it just tells you the relevant information so that you are able to repeat this experiment. Next up. So uh, part of the preliminary, the data preliminary work in your internal assessment should be included. And the reason for this is it shows that you did something before starting to be able to plan it better. Uh, you can do research, you can do tests, uh, just show what you did. In this case, there was not enough information here. Well, they just, uh, before the experiment, they chose a the height, the drop weight, the ball, some variables. This is not enough. What you should do is, if you can, do a short experiment, show the data that you got, show that it was useful when planning the experiment. It shows that you actually based your experiment on something previous. It could have been your own experiment like this, in this case, or it can be someone else's experiment if you can find a paper on the same topic. It can base your experiment on theirs and show how it was designed based on the other experiment. Next up. The control variables, and this is kind of important because uh, when you design the experiment, the control variables are 
you know, part of the design. And if you don't control them well, it means you do not know how to control them or you do not understand the concepts fully. So initially, it had a one paragraph showing the control variables. This is not enough. You have to show why they're controlled and how they're controlled. So we changed this. Uh, and we added a whole new section where it defines all the variables. It defines the control variables, how they're affecting the other variables to and why they're controlled and how they're controlled. In this case, it's a very simple answer. Um, there's not a lot of dependencies and relationships between all the other variables, so it's very easy. But it should not be left out. And finally, uh, we also talked about the research question that was fixed in the first part, in personal engagement. Uh, if you do the, the next part of the exploration, which is the background and context, you should, of course, restate the research question in the correct way. Uh, instead of writing it the old way, unfixed, you have to fix it up so it's, it shows all the things. Next up is the data analysis. Uh, this IA got a 4 out of 6, and there's several reasons for this. The first one is the usage of significant figures was inconsistent when one of the main goals of your IA is to get the student to learn to use data correctly, uncertainties correctly, and give information on the reliability of their own data with precision. And that includes the understanding how significant figures and uncertainties work. So uh, they did the calculations. They look mostly OK. Uh, there is the formulas, the variables, how they're defined, and all the units but they forgot some of the significant figures. If you go back, you can see this is 0 0.24. There's not enough significant figures. Uh, it's a subtraction operation, so you can see it requires three decimal places. Uh, here also, they do not have enough significant figures. You add some significant figures. Uh, you also notice that even though this is a multiplication and power operation, it does not have the exact same number of significant figures before and after. And the reason for this is because uh, you need three decimal places, because later you will see the uncertainties is also three decimal places. And you cannot have more decimal places in your measurement than your uncertainty. Next up is that how do you prove your data is correct and your hypothesis correct? And you usually prove it showing a graph, showing your data. Uh, they wanted to prove an exponential relationship, and they used this graph to show that. But this is not good enough. If you show, want to show an exponential relationship, you should make the vertical axis log-based and make this whole thing linear. That way, you can get your data, a slope, x-intercept, y-intercept, and you can interpret that data so that uh, this, you can prove your hypothesis a bit more clearly, with more detail, with more numbers. Remember, it has to be qualitative and be quantifiable. So you quantify how close you are to, with your, to your hypothesis using this, these numbers. So, uh, and it's not all bad. There is also a reason why they did not get a zero, and they did the graphs well. They did. You saw this before. Uh, you cannot probably not see the error bars, but they're there. And it is labeled correctly. The axes are, are done correctly. They have uh, units and the lineup is fit, which is all well and good. Uh, you can also see that the formulas and calculations are done well. Uh, one thing a lot of students miss is they do not put, they put the word uh, uncertainty for such and such a variable, but you should use the plus or minus uh, delta y, this means uncertainty, absolute uncertainty, of course. They put the formula used, and they change it into the real numbers, and they, of course, calculate it. Uh, the, missing this step here, missing the formula, is very, very bad. You cannot just input the numbers and expect someone to follow it. Uh, one thing they also did well is they presented all the raw data. Uh, but in some cases, when you cannot present all the raw data, 
they showed examples of the data and why it cannot all be shown. In this case, it had 6,000 data points, so they showed some of it and show how it was processed, but not in a way that is boring or that detracts from the flow. And of course, uh, you have to calculate the uncertainties. The uncertainties of the results were, in a, well, other than the significant figures were all well done, you can see that they did do their work. Next, uh, after you do the data analysis, you have to do your conclusions, which, which is graded as the evaluation. And this includes your conclusion and limitations and extensions and evaluations of your whole experiment. So, um, one thing you have to see is that they only got a three out of six. And the reason for that is because you have to propose improvements and they did not have a lot of them. You have to propose extensions and they also did not have a lot of them. Um, citing enough time is not a limitation that is appropriate for your IA. You should not run out of time. Uh, running out of time just means you did not plan well enough. Uh, there's not enough data used in the conclusion. You had a lot of data analysis, you crunch the numbers, you have the results, why not use those, re those results in your conclusion? And finally, uh, there's not enough comparisons. So you have to compare your data and results to other established uh, scientific results. So how do we fix this? Well, first of all, the, we added numerical results into the conclusion. If we see before, uh, well, it says the experimental results make a beautiful fit on the exponential model. There's no numbers. There's no confirmation of the calculations that were already made. And to improve this, uh, you give the uncertainty, the correlation, and how well it fits the data, right? Uh, you determine the half-life in terms of bounces which is good, and also determine that there's no uncertainties related to this. Next up is you can add more improvements. Uh, what we used here is that you have to change not only the procedures, but also the methodology, right? In this case, they used a microphone and they analyzed the sound waves and sampled the sound to know when the bouncing occurred and to know the height. And here we, we change the methodology, use a video recording method to actually measure the height. Uh, we give some of the actual things that should be included, which would be like number of frames per second, the parameters to get a good uh, detailed data with a good enough accuracy. Uh, next thing we should do is uh, add ways to extend the experiment and investigation. So further experiments, further research. Uh, and before what happened is, you can see that there was very limited amount of information on what else can be done. Uh, so here it says, well, if, what can I do later? Then you can analyze different type of balls. Or, uh, and that's it, there's nothing else. So, one way you can do this is, well, not just different type of balls. Uh, what, ha what would happen if, if there's air resistance? Uh, consider other variables that cause deviations. Uh, it can also, it just doesn't have to be the same experiment. It can be about maybe we, we discussed the example of the leaking water tank. We can be one of those. Uh, so, it can be several other things. Just don't just do one thing, like mention just one extension, mention several, right? There's a lot of things you can do. If you research the subjects, you would know what they are. Uh, of course, we also discussed this, discuss ways to improve the methodology. Uh, so you talked about limitations. You should also talk about how to improve the methods, not just the procedures. Uh, maybe, take into consideration air resistance into the calculations, which is not done in the first place. Or you can also do, uh, when you discuss the limitations, don't discuss things that have no impact. So what they discuss is, they, okay, they increase the sampling rate from a 
1,000 to 2,000 hertz. Uh, and if you do that, you get more accurate results for time, but not much else. And you already have an upper limit uh, of uncertainties uh, because of other factors, right? So increasing the, the precision and accuracy of just one variable does not really help you unless you increase the accuracy and precision of all, all the other variables that will affect it. Finally, uh, there's the part about communications, the last criteria, and this just refers to the vocabulary, the structure, how you, how prettily you, you constructed all your, S, your internal assessment. So the biggest things in this were, like we discussed, the use of significant figures, missing citations, and one of the biggest pet peeves of teachers is the use of first-person perspective, using I, I did this, my experiment, things like that. So we changed those, uh, we changed these uh, significant figures to include the correct number. Uh, we would change citations so that they're correctly cited. You can use any of the formats, you can use MLA, you can use footnotes. Um, also, instead of using I, then select one drop, or in my experiment, my second mathematical model, you changed it to the passive voice, so one drop height was selected. In the experiment, the ball's maximum speed is rather small. Uh, so these are really small changes that uh, can really make a big difference. Of course, not everything is included here. There's other things, the structure, the flow, that are also important. And even though this might have gotten maybe a five out of seven, and using these tips, would it would have changed from a five to a seven. Uh, of course, there's a lot of reasons why he got a five. It was well thought out. There was critical thinking shown, uh, and there's a th and there's a lot of effort put into the design of the experiment itself. And those, those are things that you cannot really teach in a couple of slides, but they're also very important. So uh, with this, we'll finish this video and thank you for your attention and time.